In 1941, a retired trapper from Michigan named John Ain traveled to California to embark on a new adventure in the place that had always captured his imagination, the American West. Raised in his father's lumber and fishing camp, he lived a colorful life, traveling America, trapping everything from foxes to alligators. And he grew up with a deep passion for the history of the American frontier, tales of gamblers and gunslingers, and larger than life characters who made the Old West a place of legend and wonder. Arriving in California, John opened a log cabin motel in the town of Sun Valley. Inspired by his love of the American frontier, he decided to turn his motel into a living history museum devoted to the myths and tall tales of the Old West. He called it the Old Trapper's Lodge and transformed himself into the character of the Old Trapper, regaling guests with tales of the wild frontier and eventually building an elaborate Boot Hill Cemetery with comic gravestones like the ones he'd seen on his travels across the country. On a visit to Knott's Berry Farm in 1951, John saw the work of sculptor Claude Bell, creator of the famous bench sitter statues, and later the Cabazon dinosaurs, and he hired Bell to sculpt a statue of himself dressed as the old trapper for the front of the motel. Watching Bell work, John soon realized that he could perform the same process himself and he spent the next three decades building his own larger-than-life sculptures on the grounds of the lodge, often using his own family members as models for the casts, covered in plaster and breathing through a straw. He soon graduated to even larger works, depicting dramatic events that had occurred in the history of the wild frontier. The old Trapper's Lodge soon gained fame as a unique California folk art environment. And in 1981, it was officially recognized as California State Historic Monument 939.5. John Ain died that same year. And a few years later, the expansion of the Burbank Airport claimed the land occupied by Trapper's Lodge. An agreement was reached in 1988 between John Ain's family and nearby Pierce College for Old Trapper's Lodge to be relocated to the Pierce campus where it would live on as a thriving landmark open to the public for all to enjoy. Now, almost 35 years later, a small group of administrators at Pierce College has subjectively reinterpreted this historic landmark and claim that it's an offensive entity that they've decided needs to be permanently eliminated from the campus. Erecting a fence around the entire area, Pierce College has quietly engaged in the deliberate dismantling and eradication of this California state landmark, and they've allowed a team of collectors from the Valley Relics Organization to forcibly excavate and tear up the entire Boot Hill Cemetery and surrounding relief statues, breaking many of them into pieces in the process and tossing them into piles in the back of a pickup truck. Only the larger concrete statues remain, earmarked for removal or demolition after October 17th, unless John Ain's family can find a way to remove them on their own by that final deadline. On September 8th, John Ain's granddaughter Marcia and great-granddaughter Kristen were allowed to go behind the lock gates to see the dismantled remains of their family's legacy. Taken care of. Oh, I should say, or that lack thereof. Oh, wow. Wow. Remember, I was here in November 2018. Thank God I have pictures that can show the difference. Because half, half of the collection is gone. I don't even know. I mean, we've got. I don't know. This is desecrated. 
the cemetery is, it's like someone came and uprooted. Oh, there was a big resurrection and we missed it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If it was the second coming, we missed it. I'm, I'm in awe because there's so much destruction and it just looks like it's torn out and truly, I knew it was gonna be bad, but I didn't realize that it would just be, you allowed someone to come in here what it looks like with jackhammers and just dig up whatever you want. The metal braces, those were, had tombstones and or wooden signs moved up against them. This is all really good. You know, this would, would have been the, you know, the shackles like a prisoner would have been in. And, and even that alligator. But all of these are just, this is, well, no, it is broken. This one's on the space here. The ball, the ball right here. Well, there was over 40 uh, wooden tombstones that filled out this boot hill. And they all had funny little sayings on them about who laid there and why they ended up here in Boot Hill. And there's only two left. One's got a pair of boots hanging off of it that have rotted. And this one you can't read anymore. Mm -hmm. So there was cement ones, you can see those knocked down or I don't know, broken. Um, this is hard to take in. Um, it's very sad. Here's pictures. I was here on November 23rd, 2018. So here you can see what was. Oh, she's falling down. That's her laying face down. Not me, but right. me. Oh, that's... Moonflower, 1831 to 1871. Exotic Frisco beauty danced her way to Boot Hill. I mean, how can you not think that's funny? That's funny. There was over 45 wooden signs that have been taken from here, that valley relics took. And then there was concrete ones. And then the concrete there. ones that came back, and that's the video we saw of them jackhammering them up and putting them in the back of a pickup truck. There's nothing. It's all, there's one rod in one there, and what's left is one here. Ironfoot Eva, and I bet this is where poor Ironfoot Eva there's was. Her, there's her feet. So here's her feet. So she's gone. The statue over here um, with the gal, the saloon gal that's got her hand up over her head, that's my sister's face. And we tried to have her come today, but it was too painful for her. She didn't want to see one of her arms missing. It's been broken off the statue and is nowhere to be seen. And the gentleman, um, which was my daddy, half of his face is gone. So there's been a lot of neglect um, and I don't know what's going to happen to it, but I don't want to see it in a landfill. This is a California State Historical Landmark that because you have, I don't even know, I would say 0.03% of people that thinks this needs to be hidden and covered. This is my childhood. This is my legacy. This is lovely Louise, my mom. Um, I think she's the best looking of all of them. <laughs> she was the oldest daughter. And then Aunt Lorraine. Um, and I can't remember what her, her tag name was either, but Grandpa used when they said he incorporated real life things. Look at her bracelet. This bracelet's actually oh. a piece of jewelry, wow. you know? In Lonesome George, we see real teeth. I mean, he, whatever he had, he incorporated. Here he's got some some little stones and rocks, a little jewel on the necklace. Even okay. in her bracelet, he's got some jewelry. Some of the stones are missing, but he would take old jewelry and decorate the girls right. with it. One of the statues Pierce College objects to the most is a statue called The Fight, which depicts a battle to the death between two men, 
one white, and one Native American. I'm gonna give you my standpoint, okay? Because I was a child. Again, I'm the great, oldest great grandchild of the Trapper. So for me, you gotta remember, I loved watching the Old West, Gunsmoke, you know, Wild Wild West, anything cowboy. So to me, this is what it was. And if you notice, it's not this savage man killing this other man. You've got them fighting. So he's stabbing him. He's defending himself or vice versa. And, and he classified them both mighty Americans, both of them. Yeah, it says it on the sign it right, it right there. there. So this statue isn't saying one faction is bad or another faction is bad. This, this is what happened at, at the time. That's right, that's right. This is the old trapper. This is John Eam. This is the man. So that's your great grandfather. That's my great grandfather, and I will show you. This is the picture I always show so people can see what I'm talking about when I say this is my who I go to for my fashion fashionista. Oh wow, that looks just like him. Isn't that great? Oh yeah. This one's intact. I mean, obviously, it needs some cleaning up and paint, and I guess he doesn't hurt their feelings. Here's the placard of the landmark. Trapper's Lodge is one of California's remarkable 20th century folk art environments. It represents the life work of John Ian, 1897 to 1981, a self-taught artist who wished to pass on a sense of the Old West derived from personal experiences. Using his family as models and incorporating mem memorabilia, the Old Trapper followed his dreams and visions to create the lodge and its boot hill. California Registered Historical Landmark number 939 on March 25th, 1985. And this is what it's come to. Wow. I am in such awe and disbelief that someone would actually do this to a California um, historical landmark. I mean, just from a human aspect, how do you destroy someone's art that they've worked, you know, the majority of his life on as a storyteller? You can't wipe someone's dream away just because no. you don't like it, just like she's saying, or because you can't relate to it. You don't have the right to do that. And it was treated like it was their property. And now that it's been desecrated, now it's our property again, and it's back on us to have it resolved. And half of it's not here. We, and yeah, we don't even so know that's what the next it. battle. Or if it's been preserved, if they've sold it off, given the way we don't know where it's at. So um, we're pretty devastated and we'll take any and all help that we can get to stop this madness and find a home for our grandpa's legacy. We appreciate you. <laughs>